Tibby and Finnegan show episode number 45. If you say so. Yeah, it might be 44. I'm going to go with 45. 45. That sounds good to me. Yeah, good. I uh, All right, so I have taken our video guy's advice to get the window either covered or out of frame. So it now is, and everything for me is backwards now. This microphone's on the wrong side. I can't reach the audio bar. The recorder's weird. I can't I can't do a damn thing here. You look uncomfortable. I don't like it. I if see this but, uh, as I've pile discovered, of boxes here. I mean I just moved <laughs> <laughs> things. This is what happens when you wait all two minutes before we're supposed to record to, you know, set yourself up. And that's, that's the only time I'll kick you and then that's over it. Yes. You're because sitting you're sitting on a blanket. I'm sitting on a blanket, and I knew I would be sitting on a blanket because it's been that way for the last six months, and I'm still doing it because I keep forgetting to invest in you know, something comfortable to sit on. You got to go with what you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the audience doesn't care. They don't, they could care less. Then they shouldn't. We are we are back to a quote unquote regular format show today. We have a Dukes of Hazard episode to review. We have um, Bombfell. Uh, is, is back. Uh, we'll talk about about in the middle point of this show with our super cool duds. We have so many fun things to talk about. But the first thing I would like to talk about and find the answer to is Mike's trailer update. People are concerned, Mike. They want to know what happened in this trailer. Did the nut job guy from Iowa actually show up? <laughs> Did he pay for the trailer? Did he take it away in a half ton truck? What happened? <laughs> this is not leg- I We get hundreds of of emails. I, I can't, I can't keep up. I don't even, unfortunately even reply to them anymore, but that one came in a few times. Like what happened to the trailer? So <laughs> lay it on me. <laughs> uh, wow. It seems like so long ago. I'm, I'm floored that they're asking, but, um, they're not, he, he's not a nut job at all. Really nice guy. And, um, straight shooter. Like he drove from Iowa to Georgia with cash and um, looked over the trailer and was like, all right, I'll buy it. You know, like, it, it went really smoothly right up until the part where we tried to hook it up to his truck and for him to drive back. Oh. And I had brought my dad with me, um, you know, because when you, when you meet strange people, you should bring a friend. Uh, it's always a good idea. Yeah. Neither one of us are packing, but safety in numbers. Um, then they can you watch know. you get murdered. Oh, right. Yeah. You know, he, my dad could at least report it. You know, he's not stopping anybody because he's <laughs> got a cane and he's 71. But, uh, you know, he could at least let people know what happened to me. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, it was all good. I, you know, grabbed all my crap out of the trailer. We hitched it up to his secretary's half ton truck, which was like a EcoBoost F-150. An EcoBoost, on, even. Uh, yeah, on like 37s, you know, and I, I, I was looking at this going, oh, God, when we crank the winch down, it's over with. You know, when we lower the jack, it's over with. It's just going to squat this thing onto the tires. And it didn't. It didn't. The thing sat level. Did it have like an auto level air ride or No, something? no, God, no. It no, just had it normal was, suspension and it worked? Yeah, it was slightly lifted. It might have just been leveled. I don't know, but it was on 37s. And... um 20 inch wheels and this trailer empty weighs like 8,000 pounds. I mean, it's heavy. It's a 34 foot on paper trailer. That's 38 feet long when you include the tongue on it and it was empty, but you know, heavy. So hooked it up. Truck didn't squat. All right, great. Get out of here. He goes to leave. Lights aren't working. That's weird. Trailer lights aren't working. Trailer lights aren't working at all. And I hadn't, you know, I hadn't used the trailer in a few months and that's weird. And uh, my buddy who was storing the trailer was kind enough to wire a new plug onto it because uh, the old one was, you know, rotted out and whatnot. And I thought, all right, well, maybe you got a couple of wires backwards. And so six hours later, no, no, five hours later, five hours later, I've gone through the trailer wiring from the front to the back of this 38-foot trailer. And finally, it was just a crap ground. It That's always all is. it was. <laughs> it was just a crap ground. But it was doing the weirdest things ever. Like, you know, the rear taillights were dim. And when you hit the turn signal, it flashed all the running lights on the trailer, not the turn signals. 
which is why it seemed like, oh, it's just a wiring issue. You know, we've got the running light and the turn signal wires backwards or something. No, in the end, it was just a ground. And uh, I added grounds to it, and it got slightly better, but not perfect. And the moment he moved the truck and trailer five feet and the ball got, you know, moved around inside of the hitch, suddenly everything worked. <laughs> I was just like, you got to be kidding me. Five hours, I disassembled all the wiring in this trailer, put it all back together, which didn't fix it. And if you had just driven 10 feet forward, it would work. You would have been, you'd have been out here five hours ago, and my dad wouldn't have been sitting in my truck freezing his ass off waiting for dinner. <laughs> Jeez, and were you not trying to exit to go to Drag Week at this time? Oh, yeah. I had left my house. I was in the middle of building my car for Drag Week, and we had to leave. I don't know when it was, like, you know, soon. And I left in the middle of that, and I was like, it's just going to take two hours. I'll be right back. I left my two friends there, and I was gone, like, six hours. And, uh, you know, stoked I sold the trailer, but (laughs) just. That's a real bummer. (laughs) Yeah, that's how my day went. I have a trailer that I fucked up to my truck and it's only this trailer on this truck. When you go inside, you know, like there's usually a a light inside. Almost every trailer just comes with a factory little light switch so you can light it up inside Mm -hmm. on my truck with that trailer. It doesn't work. If you put that trailer on any other truck, it works. If you put any other trailer on my truck, it works. But my truck and my trailer don't like each other. (laughs) I don't know why. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it can't be fixed. I've given up. Yeah, on it. And, the, and the one I sold had, you know, the trailer lights were in the door. It's a toy hauler, you know, with the door that folds down in the back and you pull your car in or your ATVs. Mm. The lights were in the door and it was trying to ground through the door hinge in the bottom, which is just a no, no, like that will never work. And yeah. that's all it was is I added another ground wire from the door to the chassis of the trailer and it got slightly better, but it still wasn't fixed. And like I said, the moment the guy moved the trailer and the hitch ball moved around in the trailer, hitch, suddenly it was all fixed. You have ground. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh man. So what the Finnegan fleet here is now getting smaller. So, it is. so a boat's gone. A trailer's gone. Is there anything else that's gone? Yeah. I sold, sold the old drag boat. I kept the motor for a while and then I went and I, and I sold the trailer that the drag boat used to sit in. Um, and then I had kept the engine out of the old drag boat, the nitrous motor, and it was sitting in the garage for a while. And, uh, I just sold that yesterday because during drag week, my Hemi dropped a valve out of one of the cylinder heads and destroyed the entire bottom of the motor. It like everything was junk, crank rods, pistons, camshaft, cylinder heads all junk because one valve head broke off and fell into the motor and uh and i had to sleeve the block to save the aluminum block and so you know that was that's a big hit especially on a hemi it's not a chevy these things are not cheap and they're hard to find parts for Mm -hmm. so i just sold the nitrous motor yesterday to a cool guy with a jet boat and uh that money is just going directly to John Cozzi to fix my Hemi. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not home to fix it uh, oh, for no. the next month or so. So yeah, that's life. What about the firebird though? Cause you were tempted. I think it was yeah. to unload the yeah. firebird. Well, if you remember, um, I just saw a picture of it on Instagram sitting in your garage. The original Hemi that was in my Bel Air had broke during the roadkill shoot in August. Yes. It had developed a pinhole in the number seven cylinder in the iron block right Mm -hmm. so i had bought that all aluminum short block and stuck mild heads on it well that all aluminum short block is the one that broke at drag week so i've not i'm essentially having to build two hemis now (laughs) yeah which is why at the time i was gonna i was like well you know what I, i you know as much as i love it i love my 55 better and or more and so i was gonna sell the firebird to cover rebuilding the first Hemi. Uh-huh. And then I broke the first, the second Hemi. So, <laughs> so uh, I sold the drag boat motor, which, which helps a lot. Uh, the Firebird, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I really like it, but I don't know. They might, that might be going bye-bye. We'll see. Okay. Well, let's get to our first email. This is about another car <laughs> in the fleet here. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and this is a genuine email here. Uh, this is Mark Pheasant. Fezenden, Fezenden, Mark, no, you know who you are. 
Uh, hi, Rob and Mike. Generally speaking, I love my new black shirt with a car jumping over it logo. Uh, good, good call there. Uh, Can Mark. I get one? Yes. I'm just going to send okay. you one. I'll order okay. you one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, they are cool. I wore mine yesterday to a football game. Uh, it's, uh, but he goes on. He says, I have a 78 Corvette. I have owned it for 17 years. I'm guess sorry. Guess what movie got me into Cars and Corvettes? Corvette, Corvette Summer. Summer. Now with Finnegan's 75 Corvette, that movie needs a review. It's a great movie with a super cheese and an awfully beautiful Corvette. Hmm. Cheers. Keep up the, the great podcast. <laughs> Was Corvette Summer pre or post car accident for Mark Hamill? Because he had gotten to it. Like wreck. Star Wars came out and he got into a car wreck or something that... Um, I remember my mom telling me that like kind of changed the way his face looked. Um, and, but I don't know that to be true. That's my mom. Who knows? She could have been high oh. when she said it. Just kidding. My mom doesn't do drugs. But um, <laughs> her memory sucks. <laughs> memory um, sucks. Probably because of drugs. No, no, no. My mom tried me. My mom never did drugs. But uh, <laughs> I had I'd heard from her, I think, that Mark Hamill looked substantially different in Empire Strikes Back than he did in uh, Star Wars. Well, that's and true. I, I think it was from a car wreck. I don't know, but where did Corvette Summer fall in the middle of all that? That's what I, I want. I was just IMDBing that right now. So Corvette Summer came out in 1978. Didn't Star Wars come out in 77? Yeah. And in the pictures here of Corvette Summer, like those, like the kind of the, the little ones that scroll from behind the scene shooting, mm -hmm. he looks like he did in the first Star Wars movie. Oh, okay. So maybe there was a wreck in there, but I didn't, uh, that, that Corvette, I thought I was on gas monkey garage. Oh, maybe last year, like somebody bought it. Oh, really? Yeah. One of them. I think it's been sold a few times. Yeah. Or what are you going to do with your Corvette? You can go run yours around with Mark here. I don't know that car. I won't touch that car till probably end of next year. I don't have time. There's too many things I want to do. Like I want to get my C10 running. I want to get the turbo boat running. Um, the ramp truck, I, I decided to sell one more thing. I decided to sell my 06 dually now yeah. that I got rid of that enclosed trailer. And I want to get rid of the 06 dually and sink some of the money into the ramp truck and make the ramp truck like pimp and dead nuts reliable. So, um, you know, diesel swap for sure. I think that's what's going to happen there. You're not taking the diesel out of the 06, are you? No, I, I've done I've done the math on doing that. And uh, the 06 is too nice. It's like a unicorn. It's It doesn't even have 80,000 miles on it. So it's actually worth a fair amount of money. Whereas if I strip the chassis and drivetrain out of it, then it's just a really nice body and interior, and it's worthless. So I think I'm going to sell the 06 and then take some of that money and go find a good donor engine and trans for the ramp truck. And Because uh, the ramp truck, sadly, the ramp truck runs great, and it's pretty damn reliable, but it gets six miles to the gallon. It's a 454? Is it? Yeah. Yeah. 454 with a turbo 400 and three speed, you know, you're, you know, it has plenty of power on flat ground, but you go to climb a hill and you're going 45 or 50 max mm -hmm. and it gets six. Like, six. It's just, it's just <laughs> the coolest, crappiest uh, tow rig ever. So, well, that's cool. I, I think diesel swaps uh, in square bodies are cool because they're, they're more rare. You know, everybody puts an LS into everything, and it's so easy right. to do, and it's it really is a great combination. But diesel swaps are cool. I've seen some diesels in some like uh, early '60s Novas. That's kind of cool. Yeah, a lot yeah. of guys are putting twelve valve Cummins engines in square body Chevys. Yeah, and uh, and I like the idea of doing that because it's so simple. Like, there's no computer. You can one or two wires, and it's running. One actually, mm -hmm. and uh, but. Good God, dude, that market, try to find a 12 valve powered truck, like a later one, like a 95, 97, somewhere in there, the good one with the good pump, try to find one of those, you know, without 200,000 miles on it, that the guy doesn't want, you know, 3,500 bucks just for the engine. I mean, good luck. Good luck, dude. So I have a story about that very engine in a truck. Yeah. Okay. Lay it on me. Let me, let me take you back a few years. My, okay. my Chevelle is in New Mexico at Allison Customs where it's getting built. This is like 2012 here. Yeah. I live in Iowa. So getting back and forth to Allison Customs is 
about a 17 hour drive and you have to go over the Rockies to do it. And it's just in this little corner of New Mexico and there's no like interstate way to get there. Like you just take a two lane for a while and you go over the Rockies. So we were there, me and my buddy Aaron were, were there and we we're swapping out a bunch of parts and I'd brought an LS in and brought some parts in and worked there for a little while and just had a good time. But my buddy Aaron and I had to go home and we left Friday afternoon at about five and just started driving. And our goal was to get up and over the Rockies and down into Southern Colorado before it got too dark so that if we got stranded, which can happen, uh, we wouldn't totally just be stuck at the top of a mountain. <laughs> so we made it, <laughs> made it what all are you the, driving? we're driving a 1995 three quarter ton Dodge Cummins. This comes into play later. Okay. <laughs> In the back of the truck is uh, my old small block Chevy, a ton of parts and everything was well lassoed down. That also comes into play later too. About 9 PM. We're rolling across Southern Colorado on a two lane road. It's very, very dark. And all of a sudden we come up over a hill and Aaron lays on the brakes. He, we, we, I can't see a thing. I don't know what he's seeing, but all four wheels are locked up. And then at about two seconds before we hit him, we see it. Free range cattle. Lots of them. All crossing the road. Huge cattle. And bam! We hit him. We plowed through him. We hit three. Killed. You hit three cows? Killed three. Smashed the front of the truck. They went bam, 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 bam down both sides. And we came to the end and just stopped and, you know, we were both stunned. Like, oh, God, what happened here? And then we got out and the, the truck's puking all over the place. We go back. There's a cow in the ditches. Moo, moo, moo. There's cow crap down the side of the truck. Like when we hit it, it crapped itself. Not the crap out of it. The, it there were literally one, two, three. Um, and we we're just sitting there by ourselves. It's dark. It's cold. I mean, this is like middle of March in Southern Colorado, and it's nine nine thirty at night, and there's just nothing. And we're thinking, what the hell do we do? And we did some quick math. We kind of figured out. You sliced open the cow belly, crawled inside of it for warmth. Yeah, it, yes, it's very much like uh, Empire Strikes Back. You know, in the okay. beginning of it. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I got it. I got it. You and Aaron shared the warmth of another man, and you know survived no but it could have come to that <laughs> just then a sheriff shows up and he goes yeah this happens all the time uh, old john mahoney he won't put up fence and you can you don't have to have fence here cattle can free range so we're at fault we wait you're at fault we're at fault so the you were traveling too fast for the conditions which include cow you don't know about well, i don't know how fast Jesus. we're going but so uh, then he goes over in the ditch and shoots a cow that's mooing. Moo, moo, pew, moo. Whoa. So this is getting stranger by the second. Then all of a sudden, this half-ton Chevy pulls up with a really nice couple. And they get out and they said, good God, are you guys all right? And we said, we're fine. And we did some quick math. We've, we kind of calculated out what a cow weighs. And we realized that Aaron's three-quarter ton Dodge Cummins with all my stuff in the back weighed more than a cow. So we pushed through him. Funny enough, we weren't going to take his truck. We are going to take my old Tacoma prior to that. And that would not have been a... We would not have survived that one. And No, that Tacoma would have been tacoed. Yeah. That, <laughs> good. Very good. <laughs> so this couple shows up. They're on their way to their, their weekend ranch. So they take us to their beautiful ranch. This guy's like a former Air Force general or something like that. They give us wine and cheese and meats and give us a beautiful bed to sleep in. And then when we wake you up, you wake up not remembering anything. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I slept with one eye open. <laughs> Why am I sore? Why can't I remember last night? What happened? Man, I'm gassy. Man, I'm gassy. <laughs> <laughs> but she drives us into town. We got the truck towed into uh, this real weird town, and there, there was not a lot of English speakers. But what they wanted that truck for was the Cummins because they wanted to rip the nose off of it. And the first thing they did, just pull the dipstick. Yep, we're good. Didn't get into the motor too bad. They wanted it for a water truck. And it's so dry out there that they ripped the bed off a truck. They put a tank on it and they're just going to rip the nose off and fire it up and drive it around the fields. And it was going to water stuff. 
But long story short, that engine was super valuable to them and they paid exactly what you said, $3,500 yeah. for the engine and they got a free truck. So hard to find a good one. Yeah. Like, and, and if you want a Duramax, good luck. Do you know what a remanufactured Duramax costs right now? Like a 14, long block yeah. complete with a turbo and intake and all that, but missing all the accessories, no alternator, no, you know, no water pump, no AC 13 grand hmm. online at Duramax 66.com. I've been eyeballing them. Cause I'm like, dude, everyone does the Cummins, you know, you know, let's, let's do a Duramax. Spice it up dude, here. 13 grand. It's a killer. It's like, wow. Anyway, we came home in a U-Haul. That's how the story ended. And then we went to Phoenix and bought another truck three months later. Same guy? Because, I mean, durable. Uh, it was newer. This one was an and O. if you total it, it's worth something. So. O2. <laughs> yeah, you can just kill them all you want. Uh, let, let me do a couple more emails here. This is from James Guzman II. James Guzman just heard our last show where we reviewed The Fast and the Furious. And he says, wait one minute here. For a normal Dukes of Hazard review, review, you pull almost an entire show worth of audio clips. But for Fast and Furious, Furious <laughs> you pulled like three and a bunch of weird random ones. I was really excited you hate for this. Because you hate the movie, huh? He lays it on me here too. I was really excited for this movie review and just as excited for the clips and feel as I was robbed. And it's, mm -hmm. it's spelled it out really cleverly too. R-O-B dash B-E-D. Great show otherwise, just a little disappointed with this one. James. Shame on you. You're right. I. It's harder, for, funny enough, it is harder for me to pull clips from a two-hour movie than it is from a 45-minute TV show. Because you have to actually watch the whole movie. And I did. Figure out where all the good ones are. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> but just to get through an episode of The Dukes of Hazard takes me usually about two and a half hours. Yeah, I mean, and there's the thing. It's like, Rob and I... I mean, we don't make any money off this podcast, so <laughs> we uh, we invest. I think you know what 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 would probably be honestly the bare minimum amount of time to make this. Yeah. And when you go and take a two hour movie and have to keep stopping it and find and pull the clips out of it, that could probably turn into a five or six hour sitting for Rob here, who has another job, a wife, children, um, you know, a Chevelle, you know, cow to kill. I mean, he's got things Multiple to do. Cows. Yeah. We. So he he's right though. I felt a little bad. So in the next movie, I'll do a better job. Today I pulled a lot of clips in this Dukes of Hazard episode to make up for it. So on the flip side, people actually listen to the clips. That really cheers me up. Uh, another guy wrote in, Mark Hisks. He says, uh, "Hey, Robin, Mike, I really enjoy your show. I'm a banter guy." Uh, he he sent in several things. Uh, number two, your editor didn't bleep out when Toretto says he is worried about his team's BS in the clips. Uh, he's right. And when we run the clips after the show, not the store, not my team's BS, nothing. We caught it, Mark. You're totally right. Uh, we caught it, and you know what? It was a long day, so I thought nobody listens to the clips. Let's nah, you have to. Because <laughs> here's why. So I'm. Uh, so we'll fix that. We'll definitely fix that. And these two things actually are intertwined. I am. Um, I've actually been listening to podcasts lately at the gym, and uh, the devil they're, you say, they're really good for passing time. They really are, uh, as it turns out. Mm -hmm. And anyway, one day I'm leaving the gym, and I'm walking up the hill to my truck, and uh, it's Georgia, so I try to say hi to whoever I walk past because that's pretty normal here on like California. And I say hi to this woman. She says hi, and she passes me, and uh, she's probably middle aged woman on her way to the gym, and. I hear her go, I really love your show. And I'm like, huh? And I stop and I turn around and she's like, really? I love it. I watch it with my kids. I watch it with my dad. That's nice. I watch it with my husband. And she's talking about Roadkill. Yeah. Uh, not this one, sorry. Oh, I, but, I gathered uh, that. I, guess. I, feel like, I feel like this and Roadkill are intertwined. But anyway. And, and she went out of her way to make a point that, you know, she can watch this with her kids or she can leave her kids alone with it because there's no nudity. We're not really cursing. When we do, it gets bleeped out. You know, yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we go and do appearances, Freiberger and I, most of the audience are children who suck their parents into watching it. And then the parents uh -huh. get hooked on it. And so it, it's really opened my eyes to be a little more careful with what I do and how I act because, you know, kids the same age as my sons are watching. They soak this. it up. 
yeah. yeah. So it, I, I feel the exact same way. I don't like having that stuff in there because I do want something that is just fine that you don't ever have to worry about this with your kids around. So Mark, we're going to fix that. Uh, the, for those that have already downloaded, it's out there, but uh, these shows get downloaded thousands of times over and over and over again. So going forward, it'll be bleeped. And uh, he had some other comments in here. Um, Mark would like us to review Vanishing Point. That, mm. That's a good movie. Absolutely. Sure, good movie. Yeah. And then he says, I don't ever remember you talking about the fact that the, the Dukes of Hazard changed the voice at the end of the ending credits from Roscoe to Boss Hog while James Best was out for a while. Um uh, Oh, I didn't notice that. I I know it's changed a few different times uh, throughout the course of the run, but you know, usually at the end when they show them Duke, them Dukes, that was the the boss hog one. Uh, he also has a picture of his wife and daughter meeting you with your father's grocery store shirts on. This really, yeah, yeah. I think I've seen the photo. I think I've, oh. I think I've met them on Power Tour, and I think I've seen the photo. Cool, that's awesome. Oh, yeah. uh, what else have we got here, uh, Mark? Oh, and by the way, don't. Don't bother going to the store anymore in Rogers, Arkansas, because my parents no longer live there. They've retired. They sold the store. The sign's down. The name's changed. And you can't get a pizza or a Finnegan Market shirt there anymore. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> but the burnout marks from the Crusher Camaro are still on the street. In front of it. Really? <laughs> that I know. <laughs> Mark's still there. Speaking of shirts, you can go to kfshowshirts.com and get some really cool shirts. Mark Hefner got a shirt. I met him at Cooter's Last Stand. It's the leaping automobile shirt and the picture he sent me it was him holding a fish don't have that either I need to get one i'll get you one of those okay mike we're gonna play a little game here okay and um let me get some thinking music on here i kind of like thinking music while we do this we're going to thesaurus.com and what thesaurus.com has for us today is all of the synonyms for a hot dog and you're going to guess which of these are real synonyms on thesaurus.com, which is on the internet, so it's got to be true, or which are fake. Like Frank, Wiener, like, I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'll, 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 we'll, we'll start with some of the basic ones. Right. So, true or false, uh, Frankfurter is a synonym. True. Yeah, quite right. Uh, sausage is a synonym. For a hot dog? It, it's, yes. Ooh, I mean, sausage is a real word, but is that a synonym for a hot dog? Because it's two different things. One's beef. I thought one's... so too. I, I'll, I'll give you this one. No, let's they, say it is. They say it is. They okay. say it is, and I I would disagree. I don't think sausage and a hot dog are the same thing at all. Yeah. How about wiener? Is a wiener <laughs> a synonym for hot dog? Ah, <sighs> Anthony Wiener. Um, you've clouded this issue. Let's see. Is wiener a synonym for a hot dog or genitalia? There's the question. I'm going to say yes. It is indeed. Right. That, that is what my son calls hot dogs. It cracks me up every time. <laughs> Daddy, I want three wieners. <laughs> he says it with the innocence of a child, too. Like, oh, these wieners are good. <laughs> All right, here's another one for you. Crowd pleaser is crowd pleaser. <laughs> A synonym for hot dog. I don't believe so. <laughs> Incorrect. According to thesaurus.com, crowd pleaser is a synonym. What? Here's yeah. another one for you. Grandstander. Is grandstander well, a synonym? If crowd pleaser is, I'm, I'm going to say yes on the grandstander. Yeah, you are absolutely right. How about... Which is weird. How about showboat? <laughs> Taking the showboat to Tuna Town. Sure, why not? <laughs> yep, also true. There is a wow. trend here. And finally, the Georgia Hot Flaunter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to keep with the trend of uh, things being totally inappropriate and uh, say yes, the Georgia Hot Flaunter is a synonym for uh, hot dog, a.k.a. wiener. You are correct. Uh, that wow. You can do that one separately as a Georgia Hot or a Flaunter or a Georgia Hot Flaunter. And then <laughs> that one is my absolute I, I don't know. Speaking of food you put in your mouth, um, I don't know if it's true because it could be internet fake news, but I just saw an item that said Casa Bonita in Colorado is closing. 
and I don't know if it's true. Uh, are you familiar with Casa Bonita? No, I'm not. What is that? It is the world's worst Mexican restaurant. We're talking cafeteria quality or worse food served inside of a Mexican restaurant that's massive that has like the kind of lines you'd wait in line for for like a ride at Disneyland. That's the kind of line you wait in to get in there. Yeah. And then you get your tray, you know, and you go and sit on your table. And the only reason to go there, not just because it's on South Park. Casa Bonita, come on, you guys. Oh, awesome. But because <laughs> they have caves you can explore, they have a diving show, like a waterfall where people dive off. Um, you know, it's an experience one needs to have in their lifetime. Uh-huh. Uh, and you will not argue with me on the quality of the food, trust me. But everyone should go there. I don't know if it's actually closing, but it brings to light the fact that, you know, we're all going to die someday. So go now. Because you never know. <laughs> you it could never either know. be closing. It could either be closing or you could be driving your 12 valve truck and plow into a whole lot of cow. You know. Yes. Yeah, so. so go. Go. Have some go with me. Crap. And it's the one on South Park. That's what they call it? Yeah. Man, I, I used to love South Park in the 90s. And I just like the Simpsons, I just kind of stopped watching at some yeah. point. And they're both still it. on. Uh, but Ooh, hey, you're a Trekkie. Are you going to watch the Oroville? I have watched the first two episodes. The first is it as funny episodes. as I think it's going to be? Here's, it, here's what it is. It's Star Trek The Next Generation completely combined with the genius of Seth MacFarlane. And it's right. clean. So it's it's a it's a little more appropriate than like uh, even Family Guy, but it's laced with um, it, it's Star Trek: The Next Generation. That's what it is. But it's very funny. I've I've watched the first three episodes. In fact, I had to stream one because I went to record it on the DVR and like the football game before it went long. So I I went and found it just to watch it. And the, and I it's laugh out loud funny in certain spots. Cool. Like when Seth is talking, he'll say. Well, Admiral, I'm not sure where to take this one, but clearly you're high. Like, I mean, it's f- just really funny stuff like that. It's off the wall. When it, sometimes they fight like a horrible creature and it's on a hollow deck, and then they stop the argument and they, they, this creature is rah, rah, rah. And then they say, All right, creature, you can be done now. And he goes, Oh, super. You know, it's just <laughs> been the nicest day to meet you guys, and I'm just going to go back here and kill somebody else. <laughs> It's good. There's also a new Star Trek out. Star Trek Discovery. Star Trek. I think that's what it is. I, I don't wa- think I'll watch that. And, and I watched the pilot. I didn't love it. I won't watch it because the new Star Trek movies, the most recent three, mm-hmm. are fantastic. They, and I know those people will not be on the TV show. And therefore, I can't watch the TV show because it'll just disappoint me. Yeah, and man. You know, I was I was worried about the new Star Trek movies because, I, I mean, I have a captain kirk christmas ornament on my desk yes you, know? you do yes yes i do i also have a lego enterprise but that's all you need to know they got the casting of those movies perfect nuts on yeah. right i mean they are so good especially the yeah. first one I, good direction too i really Amazing. love that first one uh let's let's talk about bombfell here real quick because bombfell is back with us for this show uh, we what? didn't drive them off <laughs> The, they're still here. <laughs> they're still here providing beautiful clothes chosen by stylists with no monthly fees for people like us who need somebody to help us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have a, so I've had my, they, they sent us each a, like kind of a sampling. Uh, my jeans are cool. I have the big star jeans. My, uh, they came in a, in a box and they're, um, they come with some instructions sometimes, but these particular ones just said, feel free to have these tailored to whatever length you need. And I, I ordered them in you know a length that I thought would work, but they were too long. So my wife tailored them up, and they're the best pair of jeans I own. I definitely am the nicest looking when I wear them. I don't own anything that nice. Yeah, the, the pants that I got are really comfortable. Like, to the point where... I actually went down to my shop and worked in them because I was like, (laughs) I don't want to put my dickies on right now because these are even more comfortable and I hope I don't ruin these fabricating, but what the hell? (laughs) So do you know what brand you have? They've held up really well. Uh, off the top of my head. No, I mentioned them in the first time we, uh, spoke about bomb Okay. But, uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember the name of them, but I just know that 
the benefit of using the service is it only costs me money when I decide I like the clothes. You know, there's no subscription yes. fee and and I'm getting the benefit of somebody who, you know, does this for a living and knows what would look good on me because I sure as hell don't. Because so, I, I wouldn't have bought those pants, but I got them and I went, wow, wow, all right, these are dope. Now I know. S- same spot. I For both the pants and the shirt, I, I d- I'd never even heard of those brands before. You know, and I I don't know what brands clothes are anyway. And uh, it's a good deal. But you can go to their website, bombfell.com, B-O-M-B-F-E-L-L.com. There's two things you click and you put in your sizes and your tastes. And then they go about choosing the things for you. Your wife can sign up on your behalf. Uh, that, that usually works out better. And here's what we have. We have a, a unique URL to give out to people. And it's bombfell.com slash K-A-F-S. And that will get you a negotiated rate, Mike, of $25 uh, off your, your first purchase there. 25 bucks off at bombfell.com slash K-A-F-S. And uh, make sure you go there. You want to hear their tagline? Oh, yeah. It's not the tagline that you came up with. <laughs> <laughs> which, which I really I wasn't going to repeat it. I figured you would. What did I come up the, with? Theirs is Bombfell, open and close. Yours was dress for the chick you want, not the chick you have. <laughs> but there's is I meant job, job, job. Job. That's what you meant. And we, we were off there. But that's a good deal. It's a good service. Um, people have already reached out to me after our first ad and said that they've gone and used it. Uh, one guy, uh, uh, John Hobson, previously was a Bombfell customer and decided to come back and give him a try again. Uh, so, And that's kind of the nice thing about it. You can You can use it when you need it and you that's all you have to do if that's all you want to do but it's, it's good stuff it's really cool so I'm, I'm glad they're back i got a wedding i gotta go to in a few weeks i think i'll be using it Ooh, good idea. let me know what you get now it's winter yeah. season so we can get sweaters uh, you can get sweaters so i'll keep wearing my sweaters is this a wedding where you will officiate <laughs> right <laughs> so the first wedding i'm going to be <laughs> officiating yeah father finnegan Mallet. Marriage is what brings us together today. <laughs> Father of <laughs> Father of uh, it's it's pretty cool. It turns out uh if you want to marry your friends or your couch, you know, to a chair, you just go online, spend seventy dollars, and uh, a couple weeks later you got a certificate and it's legal in a lot of states. <laughs> <laughs> including California. So <laughs> I'll be marrying my wife's sister and her fiance, who's a car guy. So wife's sister. Cool. Okay. Is this yeah. your wife's younger sister or older sister? Mm-hmm. Her younger sister younger getting sister. married. Well, good for and her. I'm really excited about this. This just seems like a lot of fun. And I'd probably do this for other people uh, with the stipulation of uh, destination wedding only. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't have a lot of time, but if you're going to get married on a cliff in Hawaii and you need someone to make it legal, I'm your dude. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll go to Hawaii. I can but help if you with you're that. going to get married at a courthouse in San Jose, uh, there's plenty of other people there. They got judges there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't You don't need the Reverend Finnegan to show up. You do not. Well, cool. Let me know what you yeah. get from Bombfell to do this wedding. All right. Bet you look like a total stud. <sighs> should we get to do some Dukes of Hazard here? Sure. Why not? It's been a while, and this should be good. This is season three, episode six or seven, depending on which one you read, titled Uncle Boss. Original <coughs> air date, November 28th, 1980, written by William Rayner and Miles Wilder, directed by Hollingsworth Morse, all names that we really know more from the second season. But yet it's the third. Mike, did you watch this episode? I did. I watched it with my kids, who are a uh, slight distraction, so this will be brief. <laughs> Let's have it. What is your Mike Finnegan Super Show review? And it used to be in 30 seconds, but I enjoy these so much. This We, we can just can it when you're done. I mean, we, Yeah, this <laughs> might be less than 30 seconds. Let's but, uh, but it's still fun for me. Mm-hmm. All right, so uh, there's only one man in Hazard County. More scandalous, lowdown, shady, skeeby and dastardly than Boss Hogg. And that is his nephew, Huey Hogg. Huey is so dirty, he makes mud look like cake frosting. 
and Boss brings him to Hazard to do what Roscoe has repeatedly failed to accomplish. Frame the Duke family and make it stick. Uh-huh. Yeah. Huey is savvy. He's as savvy as they come. And utilizing a multi-pronged attack on the Duke's character and credibility, he lands Daisy in jail and the boys on the run. And with high-tech, videotaped evidence locked inside of a briefcase, which is chained to Huey's wrist, the episode culminates with a car chase throughout Hazard County and its largest junkyard. It ends with a brilliant plan on behalf of the brainiac, Luke Duke, to demagnetize the videotape evidence of all the things the Dukes have you know, apparently done wrong that would land them in prison. And uh, what they do is they chase Huey and Boss in Huey's miniature Boss Hog mobile, which is a Volkswagen bug, which has got horns on the front. It's hilarious. They chase him into the junkyard where Cooter drops a giant magnet right on the car, lifting it into the air and sucking the briefcase out of the cockpit onto the magnet, demagnetizing the tape, erasing the evidence, and freeing the Dukes of any charges they may incur. A lot of fun. Pretty good episode. Mm-hmm. I give it a solid seven truck stop carnival corn dogs. Solid seven. Um, not a lot of shenanigans to talk about other than the fact that Daisy's car reappears. The yellow roadrunner just from nowhere. Mm-hmm. Back from the dead, even though it went off a cliff like six episodes ago. So it's does, back. So does Enos. Yeah, and Enos is back, which yeah. is interesting. So uh, either this one was filmed way beforehand and appears out of order, or you know we're going to see Daisy's car again for whatever reason, and she's a baller with a Jeep and a Roadrunner. I don't know. So, By the way, good What's summary. Take it.